Thank you for watching or listening to this free podcast of the Young Turks. Uh, we wanna make sure that you get some portion of the show every day. Uh, but if you want the full show, which is actually five segments, come become a member and support independent media as well. TYTnetwork.com slash join. Meanwhile, enjoy the free podcast. Welcome to the Young Turks, I'm your host Jake, you're going to the show for you tonight. Okay, uh, we are going to do lovely things for you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a little bit later in the program, uh, is uh, the FBI conducting a witch hunt on Donald Trump as he claims? Well, there is new evidence in, uh, and it cuts in a couple of interesting ways. There's some twists and turns in that story, uh, and we'll tell you what makes sense in Trump's attack on the FBI and the media, and what doesn't. And trust me, that that's the predominant part. Uh, and then uh, a little bit later in the program, when Anna joins us, uh, we've got uh, Schlossberg. If you haven't seen this guy, the, the guy yelling uh, inside the, the little uh, deli in New York at a bunch of people speaking Spanish, buckle up. Okay, even if you have seen it, there's four new angles to that story, uh, including him yelling at, uh, at, at Jewish Americans, him yelling at random people on the street. This guy's nuts, this guy's out of control. So that's a hilarious story, a fascinating story, a terrible story. All those things wrapped up in one, and then we've got an enormous fight later in the show. Yanni versus Laurel, okay? Uh, I, I actually have a relevant point to make about that, and I think it's actually very important uh, in, in how we view society and culture. Trenchant observations also later on the Young Turks. But I'm going to start with, and you know, you know I love these, a dramatic announcement. Let's go over here. I have wonderful, terrific news for you guys. We, the Young Turks, have now launched on YouTube TV. Oh, no, here we go. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Fun for everybody. All right, 24 hours a day. Uh, it is a television channel like you are accustomed to and familiar with. I uh, grew up with, well, if you're above the age of 35, I guess, you grew up with it. Uh, so <laughs> it's on YouTube TV uh, and uh, super easy to find. Of course, you just go to uh, YouTube TV, which you can do if you have never done it before, tv.youtube.com. Uh, and then once you're there, you could search for TYT or uh, another easy way to find is tyt.com slash YouTube TV, tyt.com slash YouTube TV. Click on it, it takes, us, it takes you directly to our channel. So what's on the channel? Well, uh, shows that you're uh, familiar with, uh, but also some new shows. Uh, before I show you the new shows, uh, I just wanna let you know, uh, this has been a long time coming. Now, we started the Young Turks in 2002. Uh, we started in my living room with a couple of folks who are still at the network. Uh, at the time, we were a radio uh, show. And then at the end of 2005, uh, we went to online video. We were actually uh, YouTube's first uh, partner uh, when they started the partner program. Uh, but we actually had done some version of a cable channel on our own website first. Now, mind you, no one came to it, okay? <laughs> but, but we did launch it all the way back in 2005, and, uh, and we had this idea. And so this is the culmination of that idea. But let, real quick, let me tell you about that. Back in the day, uh, uh, at that time, we had myself and Ben Mank was uh, hosting. Also, Jill Pike. Uh, she's not uh, here anymore, but she was a wonderful, wonderful part of the Young Turks for a long time. Uh, and Michael Shore would come in. So these are all the old school guys. And then behind the scenes uh, was Dave Kohler, who uh, helped set all this up. Jesus Godoy, who's the director. And he's still the director today. After all this time, after 13 years, he's directing the show right now. And J.R. Jackson, who was our producer, who produced... Today's show still with us after all this time. So uh, that core group, uh, Anna Kasparian would join us later and it and would grow and grow and grow, uh, got together and, and for the business side, it was mainly Dave and I plugging away at it. And I was like, Dave, I don't know, I think maybe we'll, we'll put it on the website and then we'll take the Young Turks, which at the time was three hours and we'll just keep looping it. And then it'll be like a cable channel. And we did it and you could go to the website back then and you'd see the show. But like I said, uh, nobody came. Uh, <laughs> then we went on YouTube and it started to grow and obviously we went to all the different platforms and now uh, we have over 200 million views a month uh, and, and a great number of shows and channels and networks and platforms. 
But today in 2018, to be able to actually give you a 24 hour channel with all uh, different programming uh, every single day, so much of it is live. Uh, it's just a great, great moment uh, for us at TYT and super happy to launch it with uh, YouTube TV. Uh, and on YouTube TV, by the way, you get all the TV channels you're familiar with too. Uh, ESPN, Bravo, uh, CNN, uh, MSNBC, Fox, etc. And now TYT. Uh, and some, uh, we're among the first four uh, digital partners for them. Uh, they have others as well. Tastemade launched today. They're a food uh, network, so happy to do that with them as well. So, uh, so what are you going to see? Well, first, uh, when you first get there, you might see something like this, uh, and uh, that's uh, on our website too. And if you see. Uh, this first graphic here, uh, when you go to tyt.com slash YouTube TV, uh, well, you click on it. But you might be thinking, why is Anna burning something and what's wrong with John? Well, uh, those are among our new shows. So John Iderola has a new morning show. Uh, let's show you that. It's called The Damage Report. Uh, and uh, when you wake up in the morning, uh, especially with the Trump administration, you're going to need a damage report. And John's here to give it to you and tell you, what went wrong, and theoretically, if possible, uh, what went right. Uh, Anna's got a weekly show. Uh, it's called Hashtag No Filter. She's burning it up. She's on fire. She, she doesn't need those talking points. She's Anna Kasperi. She's AK-47. Uh, and then we've got uh, Brett Ehrlich's new show, Happy Half Hour. And uh, yeah, there might be some drinking on that show. Uh, anyway, uh, that's it to give you the happy news. I love that show. Uh, so a lot of the of our hosts, of course, rotate throughout these shows as guests as well. And we've got uh, people from the outside coming in as guests. It's uh, fun for everybody. Uh, now, uh, next, uh, we've got, uh, look at Ricky Strom. He's got old school sports, okay? And, uh, and they're going to talk about uh, uh, sports from back in the day, right? Uh, who, 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 were the, who was the best power forward? Who was the best fullback? I don't know if they've done those, but they should. Those are fun topics. I can't wait to watch it. Uh, and of course, uh, we've got the Young Turks, uh, as you are watching right here. Our flagship show, 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern every night. Uh, I'm amused by that picture. I'm amused by all pictures of me. Um, so uh, that's a fun picture of Anna and I. And then you've got some of the network shows, of course, like Old School. Uh, ben and I uh, do that once a week. And I like that we're in totally different outfits for these pictures. So look at us working hard. <laughs> okay. All right. So we have launched. It is going to be fantastic. I need you to check it out. Uh, YouTube TV, by the way, just 40 bucks, but you get all those TV channels and the digital channels. Uh, great deal and super happy to be uh, part of it. Uh, check us out there every night. And one last fun thing. Um, we're on there with the other cable news channels. Uh, so finally, we get to go head to head, apples to apples. Now, this is the first day, so we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, this is when uh, someone would tell you, Cenk, be cautious. You know, uh, the ratings aren't in yet. You don't know what's going to happen. Here's what I have to say <laughs> Come and get it. Uh, can't wait. Can't wait. So, uh, I look forward to obliterating them on this platform. So that'll be fun for everybody. And then you know what? They could have a show called Damage Report. <laughs> what did the Young Turks do to us tonight? <laughs> All right. As you can tell, we do news a little differently. Uh, now, uh, let's get started with the news of today. <sighs> Just a, a fun little story here, but the one that I think is symbolic. So unfortunately, a volcano erupted in the state of Hawaii, in fact, on the island of Hawaii. And, um, and uh, everybody's concerned. I'm certainly very concerned. Hawaii is a wonderful state, uh, and, uh, and there's some evacuations, etc. But some uh, folks are nonplussed. So that uh, brings us to this legendary picture uh, taken by, uh, I want to give him credit here, uh, Mario Tama. He heard that the volcano erupted and that this was a good place to get a, a view of it. And he goes out there and he figures that people will be looking at it from that location, but he finds out that people are actually golfing. They're playing through. <laughs> it's unreal, right? So he and took one more picture here uh, and they're like, ho hum, yeah, well, here comes the lava. Anyway, uh, gotta head to the seventh hole. Um, gotta love how calm the, calm the people of Hawaii are. But I, I, 
uh, so there's two uh, fun parts of the story. One is uh, the name of the golf club. It's called the Volcano Golf and Country Club. We need to talk about a relatively new show called Un the Republic or UNFTR. As a Young Turks fan, you already know that the government, the media, and corporations are constantly peddling lies that serve the interests of the rich and powerful. But now there's a podcast dedicated to unraveling those lies, debunking the conventional wisdom. In each episode of Un the Republic or UNFTR, the host delves into a different historical episode or topic that's generally misunderstood or purposely obfuscated by the so-called powers that be, featuring in-depth research, razor-sharp commentary, and just the right amount of vulgarity, the UNFTR podcast takes a sledgehammer to what you thought you knew about some of the nation's most sacred historical cows. But don't just take my word for it. The New York Times described UNFTR as consistently compelling and educational, aiming to challenge conventional wisdom and upend the historical narratives that were taught in school. For as the great philosopher Yoda once put it, you must unlearn what you have learned. And that's true whether you're in Jedi training or you're uprooting and exposing all the propaganda and disinformation you've been fed over the course of your lifetime. So search for UNFDR in your podcast app today and get ready to get informed, angered, and entertained all at the same time. No club has ever been named more accurately. Okay, so I suppose in that sense it should be unsurprising. And uh, Tama, the photographer, uh, went on the fairway to take this picture, and the golfers uh, were like, hey, "Get out of the fairway, man! We're trying to play golf here." And they shoot him off, they run him off. And he said this about it. He said, "I still can't understand it. They seem to be completely nonplussed. I don't even recall them even looking at the eruption. They were completely focused on their game." So that is why this picture, again, the first one. Uh, is interesting in two different ways. Number one, these guys are going to be golfing legends. <laughs> okay, I mean, they are focused. But more importantly, in a sense, this picture is symbolic of what is happening on our planet. The planet is erupting, it's on fire, and we're all playing through. We're all oblivious, totally fine. What do you mean? We're having fun, we're playing golf, everything's fine. Here, let me show you a chart of what's happening. Uh, at large at the planet, that is uh, global surface temperatures uh, through um, the years, from 1880 to roughly now. You see that chart going sky high, we're breaking record temperatures nearly every single year, and it is off the charts. Meanwhile, what do we have? We have this guy uh, playing through. And so, uh, unfortunately, that picture Though fun and funny in some ways, and of course they're fine. Those folks are fine. Every people that need to be evacuated got evacuated, but uh, but it's also symbolic. And we cannot evacuate the planet. I know Elon Musk is trying hard, but we're not there yet. So we might want to take a look at the volcano and maybe do something about that. Unfortunately, symbolic. All right. So now well, let me move on to uh, the Trump administration. So Rex Tillerson, former Secretary of State for Donald Trump, uh, former CEO of ExxonMobil. Now, he left uh, on not good terms with Donald Trump, um, basically fired. Uh, now, that's a dramatic turn of events in any administration. Not in the Trump administration, it's probably buried between tweets. Uh, and there are so many controversies in the Trump administration that um, you almost forget that he fired his Secretary of State, which is really intense, dramatic uh, news. And if uh, any other president had done that, we'd probably still be talking about it. And it might be among the bigger issues and controversies of their term. Uh, if Obama had said, this John Kerry guy, he, he stinks, I'm firing him. Or if he had done that to another Secretary of State, he had Hillary Clinton. That would have been gigantic news. But we're used to the madness of Trump, so we roll on. Now, it was crazy to put Tillerson in there in the first place. Uh, he had no diplomatic uh, experience. And so I, I'm giving you context here because I got no love for Tillerson. 
Uh, he never should have had that job. Uh, and, and I think that putting the CEO of Exxon Mobil there uh, was uh, done on purpose to try to re- probably to revive a, a, a deal uh, that we had with the Russians that when I say we, in this case, it was literally Exxon Mobil that had the deal with the Russians. Uh, it was a half a trillion dollar deal, uh, and and that didn't work out because the Congress wouldn't have it, and they uh, put sanctions on there. Uh, I had predicted uh, just a couple of days before Rex Tillerson um, stepped down slash was fired that he would go, uh, and it's because at that point um, it was announced that the Exxon Mobil deal was never going to happen, uh, and that. Uh, Exxon was giving up on it. So then Tillerson had no point in staying in the administration, but he did catch feelings and uh, he apparently still has not let it go. So he was giving a, a speech at the Virginia Military Institute, giving their commencement. And these are clear references to President Trump. And I like this drama. Okay, l- look at the, the veiled uh, attacks on Trump. Upon the state of our American democracy, I observe a growing crisis in ethics and integrity. If our leaders seek to conceal the truth or we as people become accepting of alternative realities that are no longer grounded in facts, then we as American citizens are on a pathway to relinquishing our freedom. This is the life of non-democratic societies comprised of people who are not free to seek the truth. Wow, this is the life of non-democratic societies. People who are seeking to conceal the truth, accepting of alternative realities. Shots fired. Uh, So even the people that he brought in, uh, I believe at least, to do some degree of corruption, uh, inside the administration thought, wow, this is not what I signed up for. This is, we're looking to make business deals. We're looking to lift sanctions. But it turns out these guys have a totally alternative reality. And if you might remember, one of the big conflicts between Tillerson and Trump was a story that was leaked about how after having a meeting with Trump, uh, Tillerson came out and called him an effing moron. Uh, That's because Donald Trump is a total and utter moron. (laughs) And anyone who works with him can see that, it's plain as day. And whatever criticism I have of Rex Tillerson, which is significant, he is not a dumb man. He he ran Exxon Mobil and fought his way to get up to that position, uh, and and they are one of the largest companies in the world. So for him to take orders from Trump, who is uh, to say that he's not intelligent is a great understatement, and to say that he is a liar is a great understatement. Had to get under his skin, and they could get fired by him. Oh, for God's sake! So he's not done with him by damn sight. Here he goes again. A responsibility of every American citizen to each other is to preserve and protect our freedom by recognizing what truth is and is not, what a fact is and is not, and begin by holding ourselves accountable to truthfulness and demand our pursuit of America's future be fact-based, not based on wishful thinking, not hoped-for outcomes made in shallow promises, but with a clear-eyed view of the facts as they are and guided by the truth that will set us free to seek solutions to our most daunting challenges. Drums. So he keeps taking one shot after another after another on Trump. And I said veiled, but it is thinly veiled. <laughs> Clear reference is Donald Trump not sticking with the truth, not sticking with facts. And, and by the way, more important than the drama between Tillerson and Trump is here's a guy who was at the very top of the Trump administration as Secretary of State, one of the most important positions there is in government. And he's giving you a warning. Not only does this administration lie over and over again, not only do they not care about facts, not only do they want to conceal things, but that it is a threat to our democracy. And that's a guy who was an ally of Donald Trump, a guy who is deeply right wing. And he's telling the the people at Virginia Military Institute, but obviously speaking to the whole country, be careful, watch out. This guy doesn't even believe in democracy. So one last one on this. When we as people, a free people, go wobbly on the truth, even on what may seem the most trivial of matters, we go wobbly on America. 
And Rex Tillerson is here to tell you, don't go wobbly on America, okay? And uh, he's absolutely right about that. Uh, so I look, I am concerned. Uh, you've got a poll out there, and uh, this is one of dozens of different facts that have us concerned, uh, where Donald Trump uh, has gotten 61% of Republicans to believe that the FBI is manufacturing evidence against them and and has, you know, subverted the 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 truth for justice and actually got into a room, launched a conspiracy, risked their entire careers, all of them working in law enforcement and FBI and in the government for all, obviously uh, and as lawyers their whole career and most of them Republicans. But Trump tells you, no, they got in a room and they decided to risk all of that to launch an insane conspiracy against the most powerful guy in the country. And he got 61% of Americans to, or Republicans to say, oh yeah, that's, yep, that's what happened. 21% are not sure, they're like, maybe everyone at the FBI is a liar and hatched the most unbelievable conspiracy in American history. Or maybe they're telling the truth and Donald Trump might have done something wrong. 17, only 17% 17 of Republicans, that's unbelievable. Only 17% of Republicans think that the FBI is just doing their job and that they're the top law enforcement in the country and they have not invented some insane conspiracy. So that is how you get wobbly on democracy. When you stop law enforcement, when you don't believe in the rule of law anymore and you allow the leaders to subvert Truth, justice, and yes, the American way, and our system of government. So here's a guy who is on the inside telling you, yes, that is what they're trying to do. Be careful, don't let him do it. Okay, now uh, let me move on to people uh, who have gotten a little bit of disenchanted uh, with Donald Trump in a couple of different ways. So. At TYT, we frequently talk about all the ways that big tech companies are taking control of our online lives, constantly monitoring us and storing and selling our data. But that doesn't mean we have to let them. It's possible to stay anonymous online and hide your data from the prying eyes of big tech. And one of the best ways is with ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN hides your IP address, making your active ID more difficult to trace and sell to advertisers. ExpressVPN also encrypts 100% of your network data to protect you from eavesdroppers and cyber criminals. And it's also easy to install. A single mouse click protects all your devices. But listen guys, this is important. ExpressVPN is rated number one by CNET and Wired Magazine. So take back control of your life online and secure your data with a top VPN solution available, ExpressVPN. And if you go to expressvpn.com slash TYT, you can get three extra months for free with this exclusive link just for TYT fans. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash TYT. Check it out today. Uh, Donald Trump uh, decided that he was going to be a tough guy, and and this is what his voters uh, think that they like. And uh, and he said, "All right, I'm going to slap tariffs on China." Okay, and uh, he slapped tariffs on Chinese steel. Now later, uh, of course, uh, he decided. Well, ZTE, which is a telecommunications industry uh, company, the fourth largest one in the world, second largest Chinese company in that industry. Uh, he's like, well, I'm going to lift those sanctions, uh, be, even though they had done uh, things that were illegal and had to pay a 1.2 billion dollar fine, because he said he was concerned about jobs in China. Is that what you sign up for if you're a Trump voter? Put aside the corruption, and I talked about that earlier in the week. That it turns out Indonesia is going to pay Donald Trump a ton of money for a licensing fee on a resort that the Chinese government just put a billion dollars into. It's unreal corruption. But even if you don't believe that, you're a Donald Trump supporter, and you're MAGA all the way. Did he run this campaign telling you that he was going to create jobs in China? He said in the tweet, too many jobs lost in China. We got to get it back. What? You're not their president. You're our president. That's the exact opposite of what you were saying. So at least on the steel tariffs, he did that. And what that's supposed to bring back jobs to America, right? Did it? Of course not. So Bloomberg is reporting that the Chinese have struck back, as of course we suspected that they would. And one of the ways that they did was uh, they wound up uh, uh, st stopping uh, trade with the US on soybeans. So now if you're not in the soybean industry, you might not think that's a big deal, but it's a giant deal, that's a ton of money. 
So everybody in the US soybean industry is uh, very hurt by that. And um, Chief Executive Officer of uh, Soren Schroeder says of Bungie uh, Limited, I'm not sure I pronounced the company's name right, but he says, whatever they're buying, uh, referring to the Chinese, is non-US. So oops, they're not buying US anymore and that likely will cost us a ton of jobs. So who are the countries that are benefiting from this? Well, um, Brazil apparently is uh, benefiting a lot and so is Canada, but there is a third country, I bet you'll never guess who it is. Of course, it's Russia. China nearly tripled its purchases of Russian soybeans, setting a record. So uh, Putin and, and the Chinese are thrilled with that tariff and trade war that Donald Trump started with China because their business is booming and ours is not. Uh, Trump supporters, is that what you bargained for? I thought we were supposed to create jobs here in America, but hold. Uh, now a different story uh, from the Lexington Herald leader in Kentucky of Trump voters who are uh, gravely disappointed to find out what he's doing. And in this case, it's with the H-2B visas. So these are visas for temporary workers. They're not undocumented immigrants. They are documented. They come in to do a specific job and then they go. And a lot of the business in America use them and rely on them to stay in business. Well, a uh, number of the uh, Trump voters in Kentucky who run these businesses realize, oops, Trump stopped those visas. Well, mainly stopped them. There's a huge twist at the end. So they feel betrayed. Now, I actually think that they have no right to feel that way. He told you he didn't like immigrants. He was very clear about that. He told you he was going to target immigrants. I know, but with Trump voters, they always think like, ah, yeah, go get those bad guys. Not me, right? <laughs> I'm going to be great, right? Oh, no, 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 it affects me. My, one of my favorite stories is guys on the border uh, between Texas and Mexico. Their land is on the border. And Trump says, okay, I'm going to build a wall right through your property. And they're like, what, what, what why are you doing that? Uh, well, I didn't want that. Then why'd you vote for him? He said he was going to build a wall on the border. So it's a similar story here. Uh, Eddie Devine, owner of Divine Creations Landscaping, says, quote, I feel like I've been tricked by the devil. Okay, uh, and uh, to be fair to him, he, he's very frank about this and uh, seen the error of his ways and, and he says, I feel so stupid. Now, look, to be fair to Eddie Devine and the others, uh, some of the Trump voters think, well, if it doesn't affect me, I don't care. And then sometimes they're shocked to find that it affects them. But but for others, they thought, no, he's going to go after the undocumented immigrants. Why would he stop this legal program that helps our businesses and hurts American jobs as well? Because if the company goes under, all the Americans who work at that company also go out of business, right? Uh, well, that's because he doesn't care about you. He never cared about you. All he ever cared about was Donald Trump. And, and again, the twist at the end will prove it. So now, going back to the Lexington Herald leader. Devine says it's been years since he could find enough dependable, drug-free American workers for his $12 an hour jobs, moving and tending landscapes for cemeteries, shopping centers, and apartment complexes across central Kentucky. So it's not like he's not trying. He's like, look, I offer the jobs. I offer them every year. At $12 in Kentucky is you know, a decent wage for that job. And I just can't get American workers to do it. Look, some of you might say, hey, increase the wages, and you might. Hold, because there's a second business that has higher wages that I'm going to tell you about. Uh, in fact, they explain he isn't alone. Uh, this is across the country. Now, cuts in H-2B visas are hurting small businesses across the country that can't find Americans willing to do hard manual labor. Maryland crab processors, Texas shrimp fishermen, and Kentucky landscapers and construction companies. Um, so that brings us to the construction company in Kentucky. This is run by Ken Monin. Uh, it's Monin Construction. And he explains, we live and die by these visas. And he's worried that his company is going to go bankrupt. Now, uh, here's a quote from him. He says, Americans don't want most of these jobs. Um, he pays his workers about $17 an hour. That's construction. And he said, I've been in this business 20 years. It's hard, hot work. Now, this is what a lot of progressives said, and conservatives didn't believe us. Uh, look, how much immigration we should have into the country 
is a perfectly legitimate question and debate to have. But uh, but when the right wing says, oh, and as Trump famously said, all the people coming in are, uh, or most of the people coming in are, are bad guys, are criminals, rapists, etc. And they demonize immigrants. And they say, oh, that's okay, Americans would have to do these jobs anyway, they're stealing our jobs. But in case after case, we didn't make it up. We, we saw it in happening in different communities way before this election ever happened. States like Georgia tried this and Alabama where they would do raids. And in some of the cases it was for people who were working in, in, with undocumented status. And they would take all those people out and then oops, they couldn't run the plants, they couldn't run the factories, they couldn't run uh, the different businesses. And then they would change their minds and then bring them back in, okay? And so we told you that yes, in a lot of these instances, even though it's depressing, you can't find a lot of Americans to do this job, these jobs. And in this case, these are not undocumented immigrants. They are going through a legal program called H2B. And, and it turns out Trump is killing these businesses. Devine and Monin, uh, who also voted for Trump, so they're both Trump voters, think the president understands the issue but is politically trapped by the far right. They're actually giving him way too much credit. He does not understand any of the issues. This is the only thing that Donald Trump understands. Does it relate to me and give me an advantage? Okay, great, then I care a lot about it. Is it about someone else? Then I don't care at all, at all. You think he cares about your construction company or your landscaping company in Kentucky? Of course not. Um, and so Eddie Devine, now having seen the light, goes, well, since this isn't about the economy or protecting businesses or our jobs because all the other Americans that work at this company are all going to go uh, uh, get you know get fired and go out of uh, the company's going to go out of business and etc and and uh, and they're going to have to go and get unemployment etc. So now Devine says, wait a minute, quote, I think there's a war on brown people. You want to say it with me? Of course, <laughs> because it look racism is. A part of it, but the whole point was to demagogue, was to pick people who are considered the others, whether they're Latinos or Muslims, and demonize them, dehumanize them. That's why Trump keeps calling undocumented immigrants animals. He used the excuse of, no, I mean MS-13. But then you're lumping in all immigrants with MS-13, which is even worse. And so that was a political objective so that he could gain power. Was it to actually protect American workers and American companies? Of course not. But there is one company that he did decide to protect, and that's what gets under these guys' skin the most. So as the Lexington Herald leader reports here, but what makes Devine most angry is that Trump's properties in Florida and New York have used 144 H2B workers since 2016, the same exact visas he's restricting, he has not restricted for his own businesses and he continues to use since he's been president. So Devine says, I wanna know why it's okay for him to get his workers, but supporters like me don't get theirs. Because Eddie, it was never about you, it was never about the voters, it was never about the American people, it was always about me, 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 me about Donald Trump gaining power, gaining wealth, wealth he did not have, and, uh, and finding a way to demagogue to gain that power and wealth. And you were pawns in his game. I'm glad that you realize it now. Go tell your family and friends, this guy is in it for only one person, Donald Trump. Don't let him trick the next set of Americans thinking that he would ever deliver for them. That's not the purpose. Okay, we gotta take a quick break here. When we come back, FBI versus Donald Trump, who's right, who's wrong, uh, but there's some twists in that story. Uh, and then Michael Cohen looking for bribes. Uh, interesting couple of stories about him too. Uh, we'll do that when we return. You're right in the middle of this podcast. We got another great segment coming up for you. If you'd like the full show, which is actually five segments, um, Go to tytnetwork.com slash join, you become a member, you support the show, you support independent media, and you get the whole two hour show ad free every day. Let's go do it now. Um, back on the Young Turks, Jenkin Anna with you guys. Um, uh, lots of tweets here, I only have time uh, for a couple here. 
Uh, Larry Vetter says, uh, I wonder how many more deals Cohen has proposed to other countries, how many have already been enacted. Ooh, that's a good point. And now Qatar did not wind up taking the deal that Michael Cohen proposed, but what if another country did take the deal and then did Michael Cohen deliver on it? Did he talk to Trump about it? And and maybe you know that maybe that's what those two secret uh, suspicious report uh, from the banks are referring to. So we don't know, we'll have to see and hopefully the investigators have that uh, that information. Not that Donald writes in, oh my effing God, offering Qatar to rebuild a Midwest town and steel mill in the heart of Trump country, they would just totally rub it in the face of people who voted for him and hate Muslims by fi financing a town with Muslim money. It's all about the cash. And so look, in, in this uh, viewer is not trying to say that Muslim money is bad. He's saying they ran the campaign on hating Muslims. That's right, yeah. And then, meanwhile, behind the scenes, they're desperately trying to take bribes, at least Michael Cohen is, from Muslims mm -hmm. and then do shady deals, etc. Because they, it was about the demagoguery and it was about self enrichment. It was never about any of the issues, even the hateful ones. Right. All right. Uh, so, uh, I've been promising this story all day for you guys, the Schlossberg story. Yes. Uh, my favorite story of the day. Uh, mm -hmm. So Anna's got it for you. Take it away, Anna. One of the latest viral videos features an attorney from New York going off at employees at a fast food restaurant known as Fresh Kitchen in Midtown. Apparently, uh, there were customers there who were speaking to one of the employees at the restaurant in Spanish, and the attorney was outraged about it. Here's a video that went viral. Clients at your yeah, staff yeah. is speaking Spanish to customers when they no, should be speaking. Being very violent. I mean, sometimes they do. Very yeah. Yeah. Very Every person I listen to, he's spoken, he's spoken, she's speaking it, he's America. They, they, yeah. You're, you're, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, yeah. He's very ignorant. He's very ignorant. And he shouldn't be allowed. I will be following up. And my guess is they're not documented. So my next call is to ICE to have each one of them kicked out of my country. If they have the balls to come here and live off of my money, I pay for their welfare, I pay for their ability to be here. The least they can do is welfare. such an ignorant so in that video, just in case you had a hard time hearing it, uh, he made the argument that, oh, you're probably here illegally, and I'm paying for you to be here, I'm paying for your welfare. I just wanna clarify one quick thing about undocumented immigrants, which by the way, there's no indication that anyone in that restaurant was undocumented. But when it comes to undocumented immigrants, on a federal level, they do not qualify for any government assistance. If you're undocumented, you don't qualify. On a state level, some states will provide some services. But again, that is up to state lawmakers to decide. So he, he thinks very highly of himself and he gives himself way too much credit when he says that he's providing welfare for undocumented immigrants and he's paying for them to live here. That is not the case. In fact, uh, let me be more specific. So they are not allowed to get welfare. They are not allowed to get food stamps. And I'll get any of that stuff. Uh, yes, if they're sh if they are in a terrible car accident and they're bleeding out, we will accept them in the hospitals because we're decent human beings. We're supposed so, to be at least. Yeah, and that, and that might require a little bit of resources. But what they never tell you is this: Stephen Goss, the chief actuary for the Social Security Administration, uh, the Atlantic writes about this, calculates that undocumented immigrants paid thirteen billion dollars into the retirement trust fund that year and only got about $1 billion in benefits. If you think about it, that makes sense. Everybody has to pay the payroll tax, it's taken out of your check. But if you're undocumented, you can't collect Social Security or Medicare. So they put in $12 billion extra into the federal government that they don't get back. So they actually, ironically, Schlossberg might be living off of them. Right. Right. And and then one more thing. Now you mentioned state and local because sometimes in state and local areas uh, they do get some small benefits because again we want to be uh, uh, decent human beings. But what you never see is the uh, the taxes uh, of uh, that they pay versus top one percent in state local level. Mm -hmm. Do you know that young undocumented immigrants pay more than the top one percent in state and local taxes? They pay eight point nine percent. And the top 1% only pay 5.4%. So, I mean, does that make any sense to you guys? I mean, you can say, hey, undocumented immigrants, they should pay taxes. Okay, I get it, no question, mm -hmm. right? 
But why is the why are the richest people in the country paying less taxes than people who had to sneak into the country because they were so desperate for a job? Right, and also, you know, I, I want to emphasize that uh, blue states, liberal states like California, for instance, which do offer some services for uh, undocumented immigrants. In other words, they offer services for the poor, and they don't say no based on you know your immigration status. Well, in California, they pay sales tax, and sales tax in California, as all the conservatives in the country know and love to complain about, is pretty high. It's nearly 10%. So they do pay taxes, and if it's up to the states to decide whether or not they use the state resources to help people, then that's, that's their decision. But to say that they get federal help in the form of government uh, programs is a straight out lie. So he's beyond misinformed. Now, with that said, apparently after that video went viral, a bunch of his former classmates from when he went to law school reached out to the media. So to give you an example, a Real Justice PAC co-founder Sean King wrote on Twitter that 13 people have reported being harassed by Schlossberg, Schlossberg, some of which were videotaped. So he started sharing some of these videos, and I came across one that, that took place two years ago in October of 2016. It features a man named Willie Morris, he's a white guy. And uh, apparently, uh, Aaron uh, Schlossberg approached him and started harassing him. We have that video for you. Take a look. What country are you from? Who are you? I'm going to call the police. You don't run into people. I'm a citizen here. You're not. You're an ugly foreigner. So you. I don't know this guy at all. I don't know this guy at all. Don't worry, dude. I've got you on video. Not allowed to walk on the wrong side of the street. This guy literally just ran into me. And is going crazy. I thought he was a friend of yours. I thought he was a friend of yours. That's the craziest thing I've seen. He literally held up his bag, shoved it into me, and then proceeded to like flip out. So let me jump in because I watched Willie Morris's whole video. Yeah. And he he does this funny explanation of how large the sidewalk is Mm -hmm. and how they were on the very edge of it, him and his girlfriend, right? And you can see it in the video. And and this Insane dude, Schlossberg, uh-huh. walks right into them, rams into them. He's like, what are you doing? And then he starts yelling at him, you're an ugly foreigner. And and they were so surprised, they're like, well, I must. this must be a joke, and I must know this guy. Yeah. Or you must know this guy. And then they're like, no, there's some random dude that just ran into us and threatened to call the cops on us because we're foreigners. He's like, I'm from Massachusetts. Okay, and even if I was a foreigner, what are you doing? That's crazy. He seems to have this pattern of accusing people of being foreigners and then threatening them with calls to authorities, right? Like it must make him feel good about himself, like a big tough guy, like I'm gonna call the police. Okay, anyway, but that, that's not the end of it. We have more video. Uh, so this one is amazing because uh, it was during a protest uh, in 2017. Apparently, the protest was held by the Orthodox Jewish community in New York. I believe they were protesting uh, because they're in favor of Palestinian rights, which of course is an incredibly controversial issue by itself. But once you consider the fact that Orthodox Jewish people are uh, protesting in order to support them, you're going to have uh, some people come and possibly harass them, which is exactly what happened here. Uh, The lawyer shows up with Milo Yiannopoulos just simply to harass these protesting Orthodox Jewish people. Take a look. Why are you so upset with him? Because because he's pretending to be Jewish. He's making everybody else think that's what Jewish is. Think that he's faking his Judaism. He already told me he's not Jewish. Of course he's not. He told you he's not Jewish. What did he tell you? Ask him. Because you're a moron. Okay, there's two things that I love about that. Mm-hmm. All right, so number one, this guy uh, go, uh, 
goes to a, a protest led by Orthodox Jews mm -hmm. with Milo, who has a deep history of anti Semitism. Okay, so uh, Milo worked with neo Nazis, great report out of BuzzFeed about it, worked with neo Nazis to publish an alt right uh, you know, treatise on, on Breitbart. Mm -hmm. That was so bad, so damaging that Robert Mercer then had to pretend that he's not part of Breitbart anymore and hand it off to his daughter, right? Milo, and as much as I can't stand Ben Shapiro, uh, it makes he makes me defend Ben Shapiro because he does such wildly anti-Semitic things against Ben Shapiro. Mm -hmm. And this guy claiming to be the real Jew shows up to a Jewish protests and he's like some weird like Forrest Gump slash Waldo of of like he just, confrontation. He just shows up in every yeah. confrontation that takes place in New York. Yeah. He creates the confrontations, confrontations. He he finds uh, situations where there could be one and and participates in it. I mean, it's kind of incredible how much this guy wants to fight with people. Yeah. So he goes to a, a group of Jews and starts yelling, "You are not a Jew." Calls them <laughs> fake Jews over and over again. Because you have to agree with them. He's like, I've been to Israel twice. Congratulations. Anyway, so, so and you're not going to believe this, but we have a picture of him. I mean, we got the picture of him at the protest, mm -hmm. but we also have pictures of him in other places. Okay, so there he is doing his Waldo, you are not a Jew, right? Okay, so it turns out he was also at a gathering of um, Native Americans and yelling at them, you are not an American, by the way. There is some chance he has done something like that. I would that. not be surprised. <laughs> and then we found him at Mount Rushmore. You are not a president. Uh, we also found him uh, at an art gallery screaming, this is not a pipe. Uh, we're not done yet. Uh, he <laughs> caught up with Childish Gambino, said, this is not America. <laughs> Again, probably did. Right? Uh, and then uh, he shows up <laughs> at the Hunger Games. You are not hungry. <laughs> okay, and then he caught up with Dwayne Johnson. Oh. You are not a rock. <laughs> well, he's, he's right there. He, he okay, well, rock. you know, you give the devil his due, yeah. and and then you know uh, he finds a bunch of <laughs> animals, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure animals are innocent. <laughs> but he says, no, you are not innocent. And then finally, uh, he did get this one right. This is not real hair. Yep. Yeah, well, that one is true. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we know who he is. We know what his history is. We know what he's done, right? But the internet can be a cruel place, but could also be an amazing place. So I have examples of that. People wanted to do a little strike back uh, against Aaron Schlossberg, and uh, they went to his Yelp page, of course, left all sorts of mean reviews in regard to his law firm. Um, they went to Google reviews and uh, relisted his law firm as a Mexican restaurant, which I particularly enjoyed. <laughs> but here is my absolute favorite strategy, because who knows, it could have actually worked to help him change his mind about the Latino community. So um, according to reports, following the tantrum, a GoFundMe page was set up to troll Schl uh, Schlossberg outside his office with a mariachi band and taco truck. I love it. Okay, so, um, and I also love the way that they described, uh, you know, this whole protest and why they were doing it. They basically said they wanted to share the joy of mariachi music and, and tacos, uh, you know, just to kind of greet him and respond to his hatred toward Latinos. Well, you know, Martin Luther King uh, once said he didn't just go to liberate African Americans in the South. He uh, went to liberate uh, the racists from the hatred in their heart. Yeah. And maybe the mariachi band might have done the same thing, uh, and and it might have liberated Schlossberg's heart. Yeah. Um, so the the mariachis for Aaron Schlossberg GoFundMe page said the following: We are requesting the band to sing the famous, endearing, and warm Spanish children's song La Cucaracha, the cockroach. <laughs> um, my guess is he's not going to uh, take it in the same way. Well, it turns out he's not going to take it anyway because um, uh, the office building that he's in has said, no, no, we're done with him. Uh, he's got to go. So yeah, the landlord has decided to kick him out, and his law firm will no longer operate from that building. Uh, and when he was uh, confronted by reporters, all of a sudden the tough guy who loves to run into people and. Charge at him and and yell at him wasn't so tough. He's a big 
hat pulled over his face and a giant umbrella and he's trying to duck the reporters and then he's calling somebody going, they're being mean to me. No, he was like, somebody send help. They're saying false oh. things about me. <laughs> somebody send help. What happened? I thought you were a tough guy. You seem so tough when you thought everybody was gonna, when the cops are gonna be on your side and you were get to bully people without any power, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, and no, nobody's saying anything wrong about it. You saw it. You saw the video for your for yourself. Everybody's seen the video. You were on the video. You're the one who said it, right? So all of a sudden, <laughs> they're being mean. <laughs> By the way, if you go, I love all the work that people did in exposing all this. If you go to his um, uh, website for he's got his own law firm, such as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it turns out that he's like, well, uh, we can help you in a lot of different languages, including. Spanish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, are you a foreigner? Do you not belong We're here? We're gonna call the police. That's you know this is my country. I don't know if I want you in it. Uh, by the way, the mariachi band's like, we'll do it for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we got to take a break, guys. Uh, with a lot more great stories. Now we got a snowflake uh, in Kent State, uh, and she's crying. Oh, there you go, saying I have my privilege. When I was just threatening people with rifles. <laughs> and of course, Fox News is gonna enable that. All right, that when we return. Thanks for watching or listening to this free version of the Young Turks podcast. You know that the full show is at tytnetwork.com slash join. If you become a member, you get the full show ad free. We love you for watching or listening. Either way, there's gonna be a new free podcast tomorrow. You can keep on doing that. But if you wanna get the full show ad free, tytnetwork.com slash join. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Young Turks. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, Cenk Uger, and I'll see you soon.